Uh, North Carolina's AG Josh Stein is one of 20 state AGs suing the USPS over its practices. Josh Stein joins us this morning. Mr. AG, good to have you with us. Pleasure to be with you this morning. What's on the line for DeJoy tomorrow? Well, I think Congress needs to do its proper function, which is to provide critical oversight and funding. Uh, and so Congress has an important role to, to make sure there aren't problems with conflicts of interest. My concern as the Attorney General of North Carolina is to make sure the law is followed and that the post office is protected. He instituted a series of dramatic changes telling postal carriers that they had to abandon their route before the mail was delivered, to leave mail on the floor. They have disassembled sorting machines all across the country, including in Charlotte and Fayetteville. These are all being done within weeks of a major election. Uh, but it's not only about the election. We've got critical for small business. Rural North Carolina depends on the Postal Service. Veterans get their medicine. Seniors get their Social Security checks. I'm going to do everything I can to protect the good functioning of our U.S. Postal Service. You mentioned the, the disassembling of some of that sorting equipment. A lot of that video made its way to the major networks yesterday in states like North Carolina and Iowa and Michigan, but it was largely without context. What did you make of that video? Is it really related to the concerns we've been talking about for a few weeks? It, here's the truth. Uh, we should not be in do, the Postal Service should not be embarking on a radical restructuring within 11 weeks of an election when more Americans will vote by mail than any other election in history. The request for absentee mail-in ballots in North Carolina is up tenfold over where we were four years ago. So to the extent he can convince Congress that for some reason these sorting machines are not necessary at some point to not do this during an election. That's why we're demanding that he stop the changes that he's instituting and reverse the damage that has been done. Uh, well, well, Mr. Attorney General, he seems to be saying that uh, he's delaying the changes, but I wonder, uh, is it possible for Congress to truly oversee a postal system that has so many locations and so many people involved to, to ensure that there aren't changes taking place that they would find objectionable? I, I mean, I share that fundamental concern, but I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that the Postal Service works well so that North Carolinians, one, get the benefit of it that is so desperate for so many people in, in my state, but two, that they will know their vote counts. And what's great about North Carolina is North Carolinians can vote. We're the first state in the country that will send out mail-in absentee ballots starting on September 4th. So you can request it today, get it, mail it back in in a matter of three weeks and be certain that your vote will count you can vote 17 days of early voting, including two weekends, and you can even vote on election day on November 3rd. So people should not be discouraged by these uh, very distressing developments at the Postal Service. You know, the, the Postmaster General said earlier this week he was going to be pausing those reforms until after the election, but pausing reforms is different from bolstering the effort, efforts of the USPS. Democrats have suggested $25 billion is what's needed. The administration has backed $10 billion. What do you think is the right dollar figure here to ensure that, uh, that the USPS can run smoothly this fall? There's really two appropriations that need to happen. One is to just ensure that health and long-term vitality of the Postal Service but there's also an additional appropriation that needs to be done for these elections. And, and I hope that Congress will get to that right number. Uh, that's why I'm concerned not only about the words on a page. You know, he wrote a memo saying, I am stopping these few things. That, that's just not enough. We need binding commitments that all changes will be halted, not just the ones he identified, and that they'll reverse the damage. That's the assurance that the people of this country deserve because our democracy depends on people having faith in the legitimacy of the results. Finally, you know, there's so much, so many arguments being built around the losses that the Postal Service has endured over the years in the billions of dollars. Uh, but then someone counters with the argument that we're dropping a trillion dollars, uh, sometimes two trillion dollars, like it's nothing. I wonder if you think it's it's deadening our sense of urgency when it comes to fixing some of the inefficiencies at USPS. The USPS does have 
some requirements that other businesses don't have to have. Congress required them to pre-fund their health benefits for 50 years, which would put a lot of companies in the red. The other thing is, is we want the Postal Service to be an efficient, well-functioning uh, institution, but it is a service. That last mile, that, that person in northeastern North Carolina who lives 15 miles from the post office, they deserve to get their package delivered just like somebody in Washington, D.C. or New York does. And it costs a little bit more. And I think we have to be grateful that this institution from our founding continues to provide essential services to people all across the country. Mr. A.G., we'll see what happens tomorrow. Really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Josh Stein, Thanks, Attorney General.